Hello, believers, non-believers, and everyone in between. You're listening to Stories with Sapphire. I am Sapphire Sandalo. Now get cozy and open your mind because it's story time. The Test of Courage, submitted by Bacholo. This story was way back when I was a grade school student in 2004. By now, the school would have been renovated already, but the story will still remain in my head to this day. It crept the hell out of me. I was 10 years old at the time, but I remember it clear as day. Whenever I tell this story, even to my fiancé Hannah, I would get nightmares. Claret School of Quezon City in the Philippines has had its share of ghost stories. Being in fourth grade at the time, I thought of it immediately as a ploy to get the students to be good. I was the type of person who didn't believe horror stories or anything. I thought they were purely BS. I was a scout at the time, about to have my investiture. In the Philippines, this is practiced every year for any scout. We would be joining other scouts inside of either a gym or a hall, and they would be dubbed as official scouts. With every ceremony like this, there would be camping afterwards. And I would never miss a camping trip. My friends at the time loved the thought of camping out on the school premises. Bonfire, eating, and, of course, ghost stories. We created a bonfire that night and huddled around it while the others went about and prepared for the night's events. As we roasted marshmallows on a stick, my friend shared a popular ghost story about the school. It is said that this school is haunted for numerous reasons. One story says that the ghost of a young boy who committed suicide on the school premises haunts the fifth floor hall. If you encounter him, you would witness his last actions before jumping off. Another story tells of a janitor who used to assault, then kill students and faculty on the end of the fifth floor hallway, said my other friend. It is said that the metal stairway at the end of the hall is drenched in their blood. Whoever goes to the end of that hallway will witness their souls. The boy beside him opened his mouth. I heard that there's a large dog that roams the building. It made me scared of going to the library alone. They continued to swap stories until our scoutmaster called us in to start the celebration for the new scouts of the year. That night, we had film viewing, pizza, snacks, games, and the like. Then, they began the test of courage. The test was done every year during every camping trip, and it would always have three categories. Brave, braver, and bravest. Brave would be a group of three scouts, braver would be two, and bravest meant going alone. I have gone through this many times, but only in brave and braver, never bravest. And tonight was going to be the night. I immediately signed up for the test of courage's bravest category and awaited my turn. There were only four of us who signed up for the category and I was so prepared that I even started to play my music. I was getting myself in the mood by listening to soundtracks from various movies like Harry Potter and Star Wars. I couldn't wait until it was my turn. When the third scout returned from their test, I turned off the music and prepared. The test was simple. The scoutmaster gives you a lit candle. You go to the fifth floor of the building and head towards the bathroom at the end of the hallway to the right where the red stairs were located. Once arriving there, you have to place the candle on the table in the bathroom get a green tag from the bowl, then go back down the way you came. There will be no scout who will look after you nor guard the hallways. You are completely alone. I wore my scapular, a Christian garment suspended from the shoulders worn around the neck. I touched it to get a blessing, then proceeded as soon as the scoutmaster told me to do so. The hallways were so dark. The only source of light was the moonlight and the candle. I had to be careful every step of the way as I climbed the stairs, as I didn't want the flame to go out, nor did I want candle wax drippings on my hands. You are a scout, Poach, I thought to myself. A scout is brave. I finally arrived at the fifth floor. As I turned right, I saw a boy. He looked the same age and height as me. 
He was staring down the ledge of the floor, looking at the cement basketball court. I spoke loudly. Hey, are you a scout? No response. Yo, dude, are you a scout or not? Non-students and scouts shouldn't be here at this time of night unless you're part of the test of courage. Again, no response. Then he did something I would never forget. He did the sign of the cross and jumped over the ledge. I ran as quickly as I could towards where the boys stood and looked. There was no sign of him where he plummeted to the ground. Then I remembered one of the ghost stories we were told a while ago. Did I just witness the ghost of that kid? No, couldn't be. My mind was just playing tricks on me. I then proceeded to the bathroom and placed the candle there. Once placed, I got a green tag from the bowl and put it in my pocket. No more source of light on the way down then. I decided to wash my face at the sink beside the table. I turned on the faucet, splashed some water on my face, then turned off the faucet and looked at my reflection in the mirror. I noticed that instead of droplets of water, there was blood on my face. I was shocked. I turned the faucet on again. Nothing. It was just water. I looked up at the mirror again. Then out of my peripheral view, I saw the reflection of the back cubicle. There was a man's head peering over the door. A door that was taller than I was and that was elevated at least three inches off the floor. There were no feet on the ground nor a shadow from the candlelight. I whipped around to look behind me. No man. Right at that moment, I decided to go down. I kept thinking to myself, am I just seeing things? I looked at my phone to check the time. I would always remember. 12.56 a.m. No wonder I kept seeing things. It's way past my usual bedtime. I should hurry up and get down so I can get some sleep. I was going down the stairs, counting the floors, fourth floor, third, second, until I noticed something. Each staircase would have different giant mural paintings on the walls. I realized that I was passing the same exact mural for the last three flights. I pinched my arm to check if I was dreaming. Ah, oh, holy crap, that hurt, I shouted out. Then I realized, if it hurt, then this was all real. I looked at the stair mural again, the exact same one. Oh, I felt a chill down my spine. I ran. I ran as fast as I could to get to the ground floor, but I kept circling around the same exact staircase. Suddenly, I heard voices, each one of them ringing in my ear, echoing around the building, countless screams of children and staff in pain and anguish. I kept running, not even looking behind me, until I noticed the mural was now different. It was the third floor mural. I sighed in relief. That's when I heard the growl. I looked, even though I told myself not to. There was a giant black dog with scarlet red eyes looking right at me. Its fangs looking like it was ready to chow down its meal after a fight. I ran, taking off the scapular around my neck as I did so and holding it tightly in my right hand. Then I tripped. Next thing I knew, I woke up in my sleeping bag. It was nearly noon by then. I was breathing heavily. My lips were dry. Pacholo, how are you? Asked my friend who shared the tent with me. Are you doing all right? You gave us quite a scare last night. What happened? Well, we found you unconscious at the bottom of the ground floor stairs last night. We thought something bad had happened to you when we realized you'd been gone for an hour. We thought you were just in the bathroom taking a dump or something. I was unconscious? Wait, so it wasn't a dream. I sat up and felt something in my hand. I looked. In my hand was the scapular I took off my neck, as well as the green tag, which had a drop of blood. Thanks for joining me today. Stories have been edited for content and clarity. And did you know that I offer bone and tarot readings? You can schedule a session at storieswithsapphire.com. Salamat and good night.